Today we're making Armenian meatball soup. But before we do, we have a special announcement. Happy blessed birthday to our great nephew, Garrett. Yesterday was his birthday and he is three years old now. He is our miracle baby from heaven. He is so joyous to be around. We miss him so much. And may God bless him as he keeps growing. We miss our family in Indiana. Happy birthday, Garrett. Welcome back to Cooking with Kayla D. I'm Kayla, and this is my husband, Randy. My disclaimer. If you haven't done so, please like, subscribe, and remember to hit that notification bell for all our latest episodes as they release. For your meatball ingredients, this serves four to six people. You're gonna need a pound of ground beef or any ground meat of your choice. Traditionally, it's ground lamb, but you can use chicken and turkey. One half of a large onion. You're gonna need one whole onion. We're saving half for the soup recipe. One half cup of parsley, two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of paprika, two tablespoons of crushed garlic, two tablespoons of raw rice, two tablespoons of cooking oil. Now I didn't have a large onion. I had a medium to small and a small one. So what I did is I used two. I used one for the meatballs and then I used one for the soup recipe. But you do wanna use a large one if you have a large one or you can use two medium or small. And if they're smaller than this, I would say three. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and get my onion. I went ahead and cut the ends off, peeled it, sliced it a little bit into chunks. And now I'm going to put it in my little food processor here. We're going to head and we're going to blend this up for our meatballs because we don't want chunks in our meatballs. Next, I'm going to get a nice handful of parsley. You can use the stems. Don't be afraid. They're going to be chopped up and it's all part of the plant. So. I like to blend it up and do like a rough chop and then blend it because then it's going to be smaller and wet and it's going to help combine the meatballs but it's going to keep them from falling apart. If you have chunky onions and big pieces of parsley, most likely the meatball will be falling apart when you're cooking it. I'm going to go ahead and add my crushed garlic directly into that. We'll go ahead and blend that right up. If you don't have crushed garlic, you can use a couple of garlic cubes there and just throw those in and you're going to go ahead and get that blended up you only have to pulsate it for about uh, i would say 30 seconds to a minute it didn't take long for me and i just used my immersion blender here that i have i really love this and it keeps me from having to have so many big appliances so it's really nice to have i go ahead and i did that on medium and I just did it for about 15 to 25 seconds. And then you can see here, it actually turned out really well. It was nice and slurried. So there you go, you still have some consistency to it, but then again, it's going to mix very well right into our ground meat that we're using for the recipe. I'm using ground beef. Of course, you can use whatever type of meat you want to use. Traditionally, it is lamb and I could not find ground lamb. So we're using beef. You go ahead and put your meat into a container. You want to break it up, kind of get it separated a little bit, and then you're gonna want to just kind of pat it around a bowl. I like to do it this way. That way I can mix ingredients in a lot better. I put a little well in the middle. This is how I do a lot of things, even when I'm doing burgers or something. I'll do that to put all my spices and stuff inside and then combine it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and you want to put your parsley, onion, and garlic slurry right into that center there. So you can see how it worked out well doing it like that. It's so awesome. And we're going to go ahead and work on putting our dry spices into this before we mix it. I'm gonna go ahead and put my salt. It's two teaspoons or half a tablespoon, a little over half. So you wanna put that in there. And you wanna make sure to use the amount of salt I said because the soup is actually a very sour soup. And the 
bread recipe, if you decide to use non bread with it, also is very bland. So it doesn't have like that salty taste to it. And I will go ahead and leave a link right here on the left for the non bread recipe if you're interested. And it's also in the description area of this recipe video. So you're going to go ahead and add your pepper, as you saw, and now your paprika. And once you have that in there, we're going to do the raw rice. And you remember, just two tablespoons of raw rice directly into it. And that's just going to help bind it together as it's cooking. And you're going to go ahead and just squish that together and mix those ingredients up. And once you have all of that meat mixed up and everything is well combined then we'll start making our meatballs and like i said we chose to have some non bread with ours we did a video on that a few days ago on cooking with kayla d on like i said i'll have a link in the description area and then also there was that link a little ways back you could click on and also i'll leave it at the end of the video as well that way you can just click on it and go get that recipe it's so easy and simple and it did pair well with these meatballs now we're not so used to such sour ingredients um the soup and the the non bread was absolutely delicious the way it was however it was a little too sour for us so we did add a little bit of salt and a little bit of sweetness to the soup broth just for our liking and we did add a little bit sprinkle of salt to the top of the non bread after we oiled it so i'm just giving you that little tip if you want it more sour traditionally then yeah you're going to add actually some lemon juice to your broth after you serve your soup you just squeeze a lemon wedge right over the top of your soup and that is the traditional way now here as you can see, I just used a cookie scoop so I can get my meatballs to be an even size for the most part and also smaller so that way your spoon can pick them up and you're not having to like cut meatballs up with your spoon or anything. And then it just makes it more difficult while you're eating your soup. I like to try to keep mine either small or medium as you see here and that way it's just easier while you're eating. So I had put a little bit of water on my hands. I took my cookie scoop and I just scooped out some and made balls. And then at the end, if I needed a little bit more meat to apply, I just looked to see which ones look smaller, applied it and just went on from there. It was very simple and easy to do. The meatballs had a lot of flavor. They were very tender and juicy and it was just a really easy recipe to make. I couldn't believe how easy it was. I told my husband, we really need to try more recipes from around the world because this was really fun. I like the fact that YouTube is available to us and that there are so many people around the world that take a part of YouTube and that share their recipes and cook. And it's just a really awesome tool and I'm just really grateful for YouTube. And so I wanted to give a shout out to YouTube because YouTube rocks. And all of you creators out there that share, shout out to you too. You guys are awesome. It's just awesome family to be a part of and a community. And we're enjoying it. We like it. So you might see more from us eventually. Just continue to roll your meatballs until you get all your meatballs done. And the amount of meatballs will differ depending on how big you make your meatballs. So now we're going to go ahead and cook our meatballs. So I went ahead and put the cooking oil in a large skillet over medium to medium high heat. I didn't want to get it too high because I don't want it to burn because of the rice in it. It's going to have a little darkness to it as it is. But you want to go ahead and place those in there, leaving a little bit of gaps in between. And you want to make sure that your skillet is hot before you do that because this is ground beef. And, or ground meat if you're using that and you want to build a crust on it now if you're using chicken turkey or lamb you'll want to lower that temperature you won't want it to be on medium to medium high you'll want it to actually be on medium to a higher medium low and that way you don't burn the meat the meat is a little bit more fragile and tender so you're going to want to take it a little bit easier on those meats 
I've also seen people, uh, when I was researching these recipes on YouTube, I saw people use the veggie burger packets and they just rolled them, add a few ingredients to it and rolled it into meatballs and just use that. So even if you're vegetarian or vegan, you can most certainly do that. There are options. If you're keto, instead of using rice, use cauliflower rice. And like, it's if you're gluten-free, this is gluten-free. The rice I used is gluten-free. As you know, rice does not have gluten in it. So it's very friendly for gluten-free. And I think it's just a really awesome way that you can have delicious recipe from around the world. Now, I cooked my meatballs. I didn't go all the way. I just did enough to get a crust on them on two to three sides. So I maybe cooked them for about 10-ish minutes, 7 to 10 minutes, because they're going to cook in our soup for 15 minutes. So it's not that big of a deal. So I just went ahead and cooked it like this, letting them cook for about two to three minutes on each side until it built a crust. And as you can see, they did get a little bit dark color on them because of the fact of the rice. And strictly with those other meats, you're going to want to have that heat lower because otherwise this would have turned like black as the ace of spades. But you just continue cooking your meatballs. Once you're done, remove them from the heat and set them aside. And we'll get started on our soup recipe. Now for your soup, you're going to need two tablespoons of cooking oil, the other half of that large onion or another small or medium onion. And this time you're going to chop it. One tablespoon of chopped garlic, two tablespoons of butter. You're going to want to have one 16 ounce can of chopped tomatoes or tomato sauce if you don't like chunky tomatoes or you can chop up four tomatoes and remove the seeds almost like you're doing a pico de gallo one teaspoon of mint parsley or cilantro slash coriander and you can do either traditionally it is mint we did not have mint so we did a combination of parsley and cilantro then you also need eight cups of beef broth or any type of broth of your choice, as well as two tablespoons of tomato paste and one half cup of raw rice for cooking. Also, like I said, if you want additional sourness to the soup, then you'll also want a lemon cut into wedges to serve with your soup. Now here I have my ingredients. I have the tomato paste, I have my rice ready, I have my onions chopped up and ready. I have my cilantro and parsley ready. And like I said, traditionally it is mint, so whatever you have on hand is fine. I have my garlic ready. I have my two tablespoons of butter ready. I've also got my chopped can of tomatoes here that I've already blended because my husband doesn't like that. I've got my beef broth and I also have my olive oil for cooking. So first off, you're gonna get yourself a soup pot and you're going to put it over medium high heat and you're going to go ahead and add in your onion and start to saute your onion. Once you see that your onion is getting a little bit translucent then you're going to go ahead and add in your butter. So add it in my butter and you can see it started to melt down here fairly quickly. The reason you want to do a lower heat on this at, right now is because you don't want your onion and your garlic to burn. Next, you're gonna go ahead and stir that around. And now that that butter is almost melted, it's time to add in our garlic. And then you wanna give that a quick stir, getting that all involved with each other. Let them meld together. Once you have all of that done, then we're going on to our next step here in which we're going to add in our chopped tomatoes or the tomato sauce. And then you're gonna also add in your tomato paste. I freeze mine, so that's why it's like that, but it'll just melt right on down in there, no big deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir this up and still keep it on that medium to medium high heat. You don't want it too high right now because we're trying to bring everything up to temperature. Go ahead and add in your herbs of choice. You wanna give that a mix. Mine I'm having to cook a little bit longer because my tomato paste was frozen, but there is nothing wrong with that. You go ahead and do that and work your tomato paste out, whether it is thick or frozen. 
once you have that in there you can go ahead and just straight add in your beef broth or the broth that you choose to use a lot of people use vegetable or chicken it's not a big deal whatever it is you want to use whatever your preference is so now that I have that in there now I'm just gonna slowly let it come up to heat I went ahead and I did turn it up to high and I added in my rice and it's not a lot of rice that you add in this and like I said if you're keto you can go ahead and use cauliflower rice just as good now if you're using cauliflower rice I recommend to use about two to three cups or a small bag of the frozen cauliflower rice that you get from the store now that we are up to a boil I'm going to turn this down to a simmer on low and I'm going to add my meatballs in there and we're going to cover this on low to low medium we're going to cook it for 20 to 30 minutes halfway through I'm going to go ahead at like 15 minutes I'm going to remove my lid and do a stir of it and just check on it and then I will recover it and cook it a little bit longer now that it is done you can see it here the rice is cooked through and you see how the rice is not taking up all of the broth that is very important that's why we only use that half a cup of raw rice and here you have it armenian meatball soup and also paired with our naan bread i'll have that recipe for you in the description area and also at the end of this video stay tuned at the end for some wonderful photos here in myrtle beach south carolina as always and a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, and patient. 2 Timothy 2.24 Here are some beautiful photos from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina of the sunrise that we took from our balcony this past week. We thank you for being here on Cooking with Kayla D. We ask that if you haven't done so, please like, subscribe, share, and remember to comment and share our videos. Liking is what puts it back in the algorithm for YouTube to keep sharing it with other people. Also, if you would like to subscribe, you can click the icon here on the left. And if you want to watch any delicious more videos or you want that non bread recipe, the icon here on the right. And as always, we say, stay in that kitchen and keep on cooking. God bless. Until next time. Ma salamati.